A 427 Cobra is the muscle car of the week. Why not? I think there's a certain vision that comes to mind when you say Shelby Cobra, especially like a 427 Cobra. Uh, these cars look like race cars for the street, but the one we have today is a little bit different for a lot of different reasons. When you look at this car, uh, first of all, it says 427 on the valve cover, but in reality, this car has a 428, and that is significant. But before we get into the engine and all the rest of it, when you look at this one, uh, you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of things that are just a little bit off when looking at a typical Cobra, because this particular car is known as a street car. Uh, in 1967, you could get four different variants of the Shelby Cobra with a big block engine. You could get the 427 competition car, which was the bad race car. It wasn't street legal. Uh, you had side pipes or the roll bar. You had a, a real high compression race engine for the street. Then you could get a 427 SC or a semi competition car. And that was almost everything the race car was, but it had a windshield and functioning lights and it was sold street legal. The next version was a 427, but in a street version. And this was a dual quad car, still made a ton of power, but it was more civilized for the street. And then the one we're looking at today is a 428 powered street car, which is kind of known as the gentleman's Cobra. And the story behind this car is that the street cars didn't have side pipes. One of the, uh, the most signature things of the look of a, a race Cobra the streetcar had exhaust that exited in the rear. You'll notice it does not have a roll bar. You'll also notice that it has a washer bottle and squirter nozzles next to the wipers. These are things that are designed to make this car street legal and street drivable. It's got bumpers front and rear. There's a few other things that are a little bit different for the streetcars. The tail lights in the back, it's got a round tail light and then a, a round reflector right below it. Uh, the gas cap is more oval shaped than round. And another visual cue of the street car versus the race cars is that this one has what's called the sunburst wheel, which is a slightly different design than the Halibrand style uh, magnesium wheel that a lot of these 427 side oiler race cars had. But in our case, not only is this the gentleman's Cobra because of the creature comforts and the amenities, this one also has the 428 police interceptor V8 engine. Cobras are kind of the classic recipe of small car with big engine. And the earlier ones had a 289 V8 under the hood, and that was kind of a tight squeeze. And this is a, a, a very lightweight aluminum skin race car. These things were a handful. Now most people associate the 427 Cobra with a 427 engine. And the race versions and the semi-competition cars had a 427, which was known as the side oiler. And the reason they called them the side oiler is because the oiling system in the engine block fed oil through a side gallery that fed the crankshaft first, and then the camshaft. It was different from a top oiling system. But this car, it's very different. It's got a 428. And the difference between a 427 and a 428 is uh, pretty substantial. The 427s were much more of a race engine. They had a, a larger cylinder bore and a shorter stroke to come up with that 427 cubic inch displacement. The 428 had a smaller bore but a longer stroke and part of the reason for that was the 427 bore size really kind of pushed the limits of the block design which made these things kind of tricky to make. The 428 was going to be used more as a uh, passenger car engine and it was also used in the Mustangs. You'll also notice that this car does not have a hood scoop which is also very characteristic of the stereotypical 427 competition or race car. This one has a flat hood. So it was more cost effective for Ford to make the 428s and that's one of the reasons why the Cobras ended up with the 428s in some of the street cars. Uh, throughout 1967, Shelby was trying to keep costs down because these cars were expensive and uh, they were kind of hard to sell. So he came out with this 428 version and it's unclear to me if everybody knew that these were 428s as they were marketed because most of the literature 
I'll say 427. The 428 is definitely no slouch for performance. Uh, made around 360 horsepower and 460 foot-pounds of torque. So in this lightweight, aluminum-bodied open roadster, you could certainly have a good time with a 428 car. And it ran a little bit smoother and it was a little less temperamental than the 427s. Uh, this one has an aluminum intake manifold with a single four-barrel carburetor and it's got a four-speed transmission. And being a big block car, the rear suspension was redesigned to be a, a coilover spring instead of a leaf spring like the smaller 289 cars that came before these. There are far more Cobras running around today than there ever was when these cars were being built by Shelby uh, because of the replicas. So when you get a chance to see an authentic, original, real Shelby Cobra, it's kind of a special deal. So all in all, uh, this car is a little bit different from your kind of stereotypical big block Cobra because it does not have the 427 side oiler, but it is definitely a very, very cool car. There's a few other things inside that make it more of a street friendly car. There are pockets in the doors for the, uh, the window curtains, the side curtains. The dash layout is a little more uh, conducive to street driving. It's got a, uh, a cigarette lighter and a glove box. So even though it's still not very practical as a car you drive every day because it is an open roadster, you know, with a giant V8 and makes all kinds of tire smoke. Um, the reason why they called these the gentlemen's Cobras is because they, they weren't quite as all-out race ready as the 427 competition cars. It's a very, very neat car. The other thing that's cool about this particular one is the history on it. This is chassis number CSX3252 and it's been known for many, many years that this car has always looked the way it looks right now. Uh, it has never been converted or modified to be a race car. Nobody ever put the side pipes on it. Nobody ever put a roll cage in it. In fact, we talked to an individual that actually owned this car for a while, and he pointed out that the glass is all original to the car. A lot of the parts actually have that 3252 chassis number stamped into them. Uh, so this is you know, almost a 100% a original car, and it was repainted at some point, but it's still widely regarded as one of the most original Cobra streetcars ever made, and it's kind of a neat example uh, to compare the others to. And we thought it's definitely a cool piece of sports car and American car and muscle car history, so that's why we decided to share it with you today. Well, we know it's not a muscle car, but we hope you didn't mind spending some time with this classic Cobra Roadster. You can see more of this car on our website at musclecartheweek.com and check out our Facebook page and our YouTube channel for every video from Muscle Car of the Week.